A world of digital technology, most of which is taken for granted, dictating our lives by controlling our transport, communication, entertainment and our security. I've heard of called George. So and you've heard sorry. the game Bull. Yeah. <laughs> George Bull. Bull. No, I'm afraid you've got me there. Absolutely nothing. George Bull? I don't know anything about George Bull. George Bull, one of the most influential, underrated geniuses of the modern age. Responsible for the mathematical theory which laid the foundations of the digital era and shapes the way society functions today. Born on 2nd of November 1815 in the quaint city of Lincoln, situated in the East Midlands, Lincoln is best known for its castle and 11th century cathedral. George was raised on Silver Street in the centre of Lincoln in a supportive family environment. His mother and father instilled in him a thirst for knowledge, in particular a passion for literature and science. He was born into a family that really valued learning and he was encouraged to learn from an early age. Um, and not just mathematics, he learnt languages, he was interested in poetry, um, he was interested in learning. He was under-challenged at school and was often left yearning for more challenging concepts. This resulted in George teaching himself at every opportunity. A milestone in his early life was his ability to translate foreign literature into English without any assistance. In 1830, in the poetry section of the Herald, there appeared a poem called Ode to Spring, translated from the Greek poet Meliega by young 14-year-old George. A couple of weeks later, a letter appeared in the Herald from one PWB of Bracebridge saying that he couldn't believe that this was the work of a 14-year-old. Um, so there was some controversy in the form of correspondence went on for a few weeks in the Lincoln Herald about this. Um, personally, I believe that um, Bull, as a young boy with a lot of learning, could have translated it, but perhaps with the help, with some parental help. At the age of 16, George was required to pursue a career due to his family's financial constraints. He took his first job as a teacher at a school in Doncaster. It was in Doncaster where he had his first and most important flash of inspiration that would later make him a respected academic. Bull returned to Lincoln at the age of 18 and opened his own school at this house on Pottergate. He continued teaching at Pottergate for six years and during this time produced mathematical publications and won several awards, most notably a gold medal for mathematics from the Royal Society, a much revered achievement for the time. Due to his isolation in Lincoln from like-minded academics in places such as Oxford and Cambridge, his progress was hindered. It was around this time that Bull lost his parents. This was the point that Bull's life was about to change forever. There's no doubt in my mind that Bull has impacted probably on every individual's life in this country as we stand now. The mathematical analysis of logic, Bull's first book published in 1847, included a theory now termed Boolean algebra. This was a mathematical language for dealing with questions of logic which is now needed in the design of modern digital equipment. But what is the core of Boolean algebra? 
it goes back to sets and whether uh, items fall into one set or another and whether they share attributes, whether, whether there are commonalities between those sets. And set theory had been around for some time before Ball. What Ball recognised was that you could apply rules that are very, very similar to arithmetic to those sets. So, for example, A and B would be similar in, in arithmetic terms to A multiplied by B. A or B would be similar in arithmetic terms to A added to B. Yeah? So in one, one set forms part, the, the two, the, where the, the two sets are common, they're linked together, and that would be the AND function, and where they have completely separate attributes, that would be the OR function. Most of his learning was self-taught or taught by people in his immediate vicinity. And yet, without having a university degree, without going to Oxford or Cambridge, he was appointed first professor of mathematics at this new university at, in Cork in Ireland. Um, so from unlikely beginnings, he became very important in the development of mathematics in the 19th century. While teaching in Cork, he fell in love with Mary Everest, niece of Sir George Everest, the man after whom the world's highest mountain is named. They married in 1855 and had five daughters, who went on to have successful careers for themselves in the world of medicine and literature. Disaster struck one day when Bull got drenched by rain on the way to a lecture. He carried out the lecture in his wet clothes and developed pneumonia. Mary was a believer in homeopathy, curing an illness by adding the symptoms. She would often throw buckets of water over the dying George in an attempt to cure him. This would result in his eventual death on the 8th of December 1864. In all the units I teach, um, whether it be general electronics, digital electronics or microprocessors, there is a distinct section devoted to Boolean algebra and it does seem a shame to me that you know it, it's, it's Boolean algebra and it, people do not relate Boole with Boolean algebra and it's, it is a great shame I think because the, 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 the man has certainly had a huge impact. People who have more mathematical knowledge than I have have said to me that he was a greater man than he's given credit for. Although recognised as a genius during his own lifetime, the true impact of his theory hasn't been realised until now. All there is in memory of this forgotten genius is a stained glass window dedicated to his work in Lincoln Cathedral, along with just two other plaques around the city. In 1984, the Ball Library was opened in Cork, but perhaps his greatest memorial is the digital age we live in today.